Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make a server rack that's straight out of Star Wars. Today we've got a really big but also really fun project coming up. We're going to have a piece of furniture that's going to fit right here in the office. It's going to go almost all the way up to the ceiling and it's going to have two main jobs. It's going to have a big TV right here so that we can sit around and watch videos and preview videos together in the office. And then in the bottom we're going to have a server rack. Now by server rack, I mean it's going to be a rack that holds both audio equipment and computer equipment. So basically this thing right here, we're going to have two of them side by side. We're basically going to make this look like it's a computer console from another universe. So we're going to decorate it with all sorts of cool buttons and controls. We'll get to that in a minute. Let me show you the overall shape of the thing. Like usual, we're starting in Fusion 360, and in this case, I'm not actually building out a really specific build plan. This is more of getting the design down based on the physical elements that we have to deal with, the server rack and the TV. Based on that, I've got the look that I want, and I've got it segmented into two or three pieces. I'm not exactly sure yet. We're going to have the server rack on the bottom, then a control surface, and then the box on the top with the TV. We're building those independently, and then they can be bolted together, just like we did the arcade cabinet for Mortal Kombat a while back. So first off, let's go out and build these basic boxes, and then we'll add the shapes. I got a bunch of the pieces ripped down, but a lot of these are going to have to be cut to fit. So the way I'm going to go about this is just make the really basic box at the bottom first and then start to work up. I'm going to make this section by cutting down the shape of the outsides and building that box and setting it on top and then just keep moving up and cutting out these profiles as I go. Now I'm just going to put these together with some glue and brad nails because the entire thing is going to get locked together later on. So really I'm just kind of getting the structure put together and then as we start to bolt the pieces together and add in stringers it'll, it'll get stronger. I'm also trying out these corner clamps that I got recently. I've never used them before but they're spring loaded so they're not going to be as strong as ones you would tighten down but I think they'll hold the pieces in place well enough to get everything brad nailed together. This video is brought to you by our Maker Alliance, which is a fantastic community of people behind what we do. We get to hang out with them on Discord, we play Minecraft with them, we have monthly hangouts, and they get a bunch of other perks, like seeing these videos early and discounts on plans and a bunch of other stuff. If you want to find out more, go to iliketomakestuff.com slash join. I'm putting together the structure of this just kind of as I go, so I'm not really planning ahead. I didn't think about the fact that I need some sort of a support here in the middle so that this big long panel won't push up and down. So basically what I'm going to do is take another scrap and I'm going to trace the outside perimeter of this and then make an offset because I need this to fit on the inside of these top and front pieces rather than the same size as the outside. So I'm going to take these, line up the bottom edge, and then I'm going to trace the outside perimeter of the entire piece. Now we need to take this line and offset it in a half of an inch so that this fits on the inside. And to do that, I'm going to take a piece of MDF, line it up with the line that I drew, and then just trace on the inside of that line. Now you've got a half inch offset and you can just cut this one out.
I'm being a little rough on the corners here, just trying to get them to line up by whatever means necessary. Eventually, all of these seams are gonna get filled with wood filler or spackle. I'm gonna use Bondo to make all of this look like one single surface. Eventually, it's gonna get painted and everything, so all of these crimes will be hidden. I've got the last one of these angled pieces put in place here, and I wanted to point out, like I'm not really precisely measuring all of these compound angles and where they meet. I'm basically putting in one flat side and then just trimming away a really acute angle on the back side of this just to make it fit. And once I've got more of the angle than I actually need to clear this, then I just keep chopping off little bits of this material until it fits in the opening. So if you look at it from the back side, they don't meet up, but that doesn't really matter as long as they meet up from the outside. Got this top section on here and this thing's starting to look really cool. It does look a whole lot like an arcade cabinet, but it's not gonna look like that for long. I'm gonna keep these three pieces separated for now. It's gonna be easier to finish them and we still have a lot of details to add, but eventually, once they get put in the room, I'm gonna drive in some screws and connect all the pieces for stability. The next big chunk of work here is to clean up all of these edges. We gotta put in wood filler, fill all the holes, get everything sanded smooth so it looks like it's made out of something other than MDF. Then we're gonna take a chamfering bit, run along all these edges just to give a nice angle to all the pieces and to separate between the distinct sections. I got that chamfer added to a lot of these edges, which is incredibly messy with MDF, but it added a really nice detail, especially where the different pieces meet up. Now, one of the other details that we're gonna be adding is this little frame, and this is gonna go around the bottom section. And this was something Josh designed and cut out on the CNC. We're just gonna take advantage of every tool that we have on this to make it look as awesome as possible. Now, the idea here is that this is some sort of a receiver for maybe a cover for the case or another part of the case that's gonna kinda connect here. So we're just kinda making up stuff as we go, so basically we have these pieces that we need to paint to look like metal, then we're gonna stick them on the bottom of the frame. One of the other big things we need to do to this to make it look like it's something more interesting than just flat surfaces is add details to these different panels. And that's gonna be just a lot of adding layers and kind of making sections that come out, some that go in, and adding things like handles. Imagine that this were a thing in space that needed to be carried around from base to base. You would want a handle. So we'll use some pieces like this that are in the real world. We'll make holes for them, stick them in, and then weather them and paint them up so that they look used.
We've got a bunch more of these details added. We've got a bezel around the screen, some panels on the side, and a really cool border around the control panel. I would really like how that turned out. Next up, we're moving on to some structural stuff. This is all gonna be covered up, but we're gonna put a two by four down the middle and one on each side. And this is gonna have the bracket that's gonna be mounted here so that each one of the rack mount units can be put in place on those brackets. So these are gonna get covered up with the trim that we worked on earlier on the CNC. We've got these primed, sanded, these are looking great. And these are gonna get painted before they get put on. So we're gonna get these things put in place, do a little more sanding, and then this whole thing is ready for paint. I got the first coat of primer on these things, all three of these pieces, and they are just really big. Too big for the paint booth that we made recently, so I've brought them outside and I've got them on the stand to paint. I got the first coat of primer on and then knocked it down with some sandpaper, so it's pretty smooth, but I reached out to Brian from Smuggler's Room to ask how he does this because he paints and creates all sorts of awesome Star Wars inspired props, sets, rooms, all sorts of stuff, and in fact, he's gonna help out on this project. He gave me some information on his process for painting, and it's actually using spray paint, which is great because I don't have a big sprayer. So he told me which primers, which paints to get, and we're gonna use them on this. And later on, I'm gonna show you what he's making to go in this project. You know, I said earlier I don't have a sprayer, and I actually do have a sprayer, but I really, really don't like it. I've tried two or three different ones, never been happy with them, so I always end up back on rattle cans. I've got the paint pretty much finished for the base coat on this, and one thing I did want to point out is that I went over the entire thing with a matte clear coat. And what that does is evens out the finish on the outside of the spray paint. A lot of times spray paint will be heavier in one spot than another and you can see the finish is a little different, but the clear matte really evens it out and helps a lot. I put in that bar just to stop the TV from falling backward. It's nice and snug in the opening, so I'm not worried about it falling forward, and this should keep it in place. We've also got plenty of access back here to plug everything in, and down in this section, there's a kind of dead space, an empty space that we can use for storage. Now, I'm not planning on bolting this thing to the wall, so we can pull it out to take advantage of this area if we want to. And the reason I'm not worried about bolting it to the wall is because this entire thing is gonna be weighted at the bottom. All of the heavy stuff is gonna be all the way down there, so I'm not worried about it tipping over. Next up, we're gonna add the brackets to the inside of the sections to actually make the rack mount area. Now these are just kind of standard brackets you can buy in a bunch of different lengths. They screw through this side into whatever's holding them and then the front pieces actually have threading on them so that you can thread in screws to hold the rack mount units in place. Unfortunately, these have numbers on them and that does not look very science fiction-y, so I'm gonna take these out, spray them black, then we'll put them on. We've got two main things left to do here now that the structure is in place and the rails are on. One, we've gotta dress the whole thing up, add a bunch of greeblies and knobs and controls to make it look like it's from another universe. And the other thing is to move all the electronics into place. Now, we don't have enough electronics to actually cover all of this space, so that also gives us the opportunity to build in some plates that are just for the aesthetic. Luckily, we're gonna bring in Brian from the Smuggler's Room and he's gonna make some of these panels for us. Brian, thank you so much for the package. I got the package of all the stuff that you made. These are incredible. These turned out so good. This is all basically laser stuff, right? Like you cut all of these on the laser? Correct, yeah, all the pieces are laser cut. It looks way better than my laser cut stuff looks. <laughs> but you're super good at this, this whole aesthetic. Like you've got all of the details down to where you just know how to do it. And you also sent a whole bunch of these. I would like for you to explain your process on making these, because there's these cast pieces, all these detail, little space looking things. So how'd you do this? 
Step one is don't throw anything into the garbage. It all can be used. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's kind of where it starts. But it, just like when they made the films, it's collecting all these random bits of unrecognizable stuff. For, for those particular pieces, it was gluing them in an orientation that if you had one by itself, it would look great. If you had 15 of them, it would, they, would, they would look interesting as well. So they're basically mixed match of laser cut acrylic with some buttons and knobs and caps and lids from pill bottles and stuff glued down. Then we make a mold. We make a master mold of it. Then you can reproduce them with resin, basically. So it just becomes plastic resin poured over and over again. Yeah, you can tell there's like duplicates of the same pieces where you've you've made multiple castings of them. Yeah. And I mean, like the things on here, I can notice a couple of knobs and like, I guess that's from a, a juice bottle or something. I don't know. But like, there's a lot of these that look really technical. I mean, are you taking apart electronics as well? Yeah. When I say I don't throw away, I don't throw away at all. I, I take electronics apart, old vintage projectors and cameras. There are 15 or 20 big bins that are just full to the brim with that stuff. So you don't have to have that many things because you can make a few and you no. can copy them and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's obvious from the background of your video, people can see like the types of stuff that you make. Your work is is fantastic. It hits the sweet spot of like art and Star Wars and science fiction and all that stuff. So anybody that's interested in this stuff, how this stuff is made, or you want to see more of it, be sure to go check out the Smuggler's Room. I'm really looking forward to putting these things on. Thank you so much for making these and sending them over. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. We're so happy to be part of the project. We appreciate it. Awesome. Now, the first thing to do here to lay out all of the designs is actually laying out designs based on existing stuff. So I found a bunch of really high resolution, cool screenshots from different Star Wars production websites. And I can look at the different design elements within the control panels and try to replicate some of that stuff in Illustrator or whatever design software you want to use. I'm making the outline boxes and then I'm going to cut these out out of pieces of acrylic or aluminum so that I can put them on the existing control panel. I chose this particular era because I like this type of design, but there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. You basically just have to decide which parts of the visual thing that you want to carry over into your project. Again, Brian from The Smuggler's Room is really, really good at this, and we're going to take advantage of it on this project in a little bit. We got these pieces ready to go on the front face here, and unfortunately this is all kind of painted, so wood glue would not really work to hold this on, so I'm going to use one of my favorites, E6000. Now the problem with this is that it takes a little while to dry. So I'm gonna put some on the back of this and then to get it to stay in place rather than shooting in nails, I'm just gonna use some hot glue. Now it's time to actually put down the panels for these different control sections on this area. And I kind of went back and forth and trying this in some different ways. I tried with a vinyl cutter to make some pieces. It looked okay, but it just wasn't really the right thing. And then I looked at acrylic sheets. Now, unfortunately we only had clear acrylic here, but I went ahead and cut out the pieces and then painted the back of them. So the back of this clear acrylic got spray painted red and you can see how cool it looks from the front. Now the frames around these are a separate piece that's cut out, they're really thin and wobbly. I spray painted them kind of a silver metal color, and so I just have to glue those back around their colored piece and then put them in place. To hold them in place, I'm gonna try to use some E6000. I tried to use CA glue on the back of this and it actually started to melt away the paint a little bit. I don't want that, E6000 should be pretty good and it'll be removable if I need it to be. So I said the E6000 was going to work, and it did for the white panels, but on the red it actually ate away the paint, and you can see down here it started to eat away a little bit of the black paint as well. So I moved over to Weld Bond, which is just a simpler glue, it's kind of PVA glue, and it seems to be working out pretty well for these panels. Now, greeblies are the things that you add to a project to add detail, make it look like it's something that it's not. 
And in this case, we're gonna be grabbing a bunch of pieces of metal from different things and pieces of plastic, including these juice lids. We're gonna spray these up and then kind of stack them together to make different items on our cabinet. And like I mentioned before, Brian at the Smuggler's Room is super good at this. If you're interested in more detail on how to go about this and where to get these objects, definitely go check out his videos. If you want to make pieces like this for your own projects, greeblies, greebles, fakey plasties, whatever you want to call them, you can make these using Fusion 360's McMaster Car plugin. Let me show you how we did it. So you can insert McMaster Car components from their catalog and you can alter them a little bit to make it look like it came out of the Star Wars universe. So we're going to find a magnet. This one looks cool. And you can click on these product numbers and you can get a detail. And from there, you can insert that model directly into Fusion 360. And then once you have the part in Fusion 360, you can do some really simple editing to make it come to life as your own unique Star Wars part. And then once you have what you like, you can send it directly to a 3D printer and you can print it out, you can put it on your project. With Greeblies, you use whatever interesting shapes you can find. If you like Lego, you know what these things are. We've got a whole bunch of them, so we're gonna take advantage of it. So I'm using some dry brushing here just to make it look like some of the paint has worn away and it's showing the metal underneath and you just barely need any paint at all. In fact, you wipe off almost all of the paint before you try to apply the brush. These things are really cool and I wanna make a small one. So I started in Illustrator and made a little design that's similar to what's on those images and cut it out on the laser cutter. I actually just engraved and scored those lines into this piece of plexiglass. Then from this size, I went into Fusion and made a really simple frame. Now this is a two-part frame so that I could 3D print it in two pieces and not have to worry about supports. So I printed the back frame and then the kind of bezel that's gonna go on the front of it to make it lean out. So once this piece goes on the inside of here, I've also got room to add a layer of LEDs around the outside of it so it'll edge light the acrylic and make all of those little score lines light up. And this whole thing is gonna go right up here. So I don't really like the fact that you can see the LEDs reflecting on the paint. So we're gonna backfill it with something that's black uh, to cover up the actual LEDs so that they're only shining through the acrylic.
I've been adding tons of greeblies to this thing and adding little doodads here and there. And this is one of those things that could go on forever. So eventually you just have to stop. I did also add a push button here that's connected to the power supply of all the LEDs and it's latching so I can turn all those lights on at the same time. And with that, I'm gonna call this done. I'm extremely happy with how this thing turned out for several different reasons. One, because I got to collaborate with Brian from The Smuggler's Room. Huge thanks to him for all the work that he did on this and the inspiration for this type of look and feel. But I'm also really excited because this took stuff that we have to have here in the office, stuff that's not really interesting to look at, and put it in a package that looks really cool and looks like something I would like to see in a movie. I hope this gave you an idea to take something normal and make it awesome. And if it did, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may want to check out and be sure to check out the smuggler's room as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And puts it in a package that is really, I almost said out of this world and that would have been like ridiculous. <laughs> Pretty stellar. <laughs> hey. Tell me that doesn't look good. I used the wrong side of the brush and it looked good. Like we've done before with the mortal co mortal, mortal, mortal cup cabinet. Yeah, I don't know what to do with my hands. We'll see you next time. Out of this world. Out of this world.